Welcome back to Don's Life. Welcome to the channel. Today on Rental Reviews, we have a 2020 Mercedes GLA 250. I've rented it, so now I'm going to review it. This is the 2020 Mercedes GLA 250 with a 4MATIC all-wheel drive transmission, also available in a front-wheel drive. This one's powered by a 2.0-liter 4-cylinder with 208 horsepower. It does have a 7-speed automatic transmission. As you can see, the ride height looks a little high for a compact SUV. Not sure how that'll affect the handling. However, the interior is reasonably luxurious, but a little on the low end for a Mercedes. Okay, here's our key fob. We'll start here. Pull this down to pop the hatch. We have a cargo net in the back. A little access panel. Right there, just to some plugs and electronics wiring. Got a 12 volt accessory there. Good tethers for your car seats. A top tether for a middle car seat. This looks like a pass through. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. So if you had skis or something long you had to put through there. You've got some tie down points, another little cargo net. And then in here, it appears to be lockable as well. We have our Mercedes first aid kit, a tow hook, front plate adapter, and pre-delivery inspection. Everything is good there. Owner's manual, tire warranty. Oh, it's a little cargo basket that you can build. That's kind of cool. We got a privacy cover when you put down the glass. Push that button right there. And I believe it's a nice soft close mechanism. Yep, there you go. This does have the proximity detection in the doors. So if I put my hand here, the door unlocks. As long as you're holding the key. Some leather stitching on the door panels. Plastic, we've got some leather inserts. A little tight in here for me, but we'll get in. We'll try it out. Yeah, so not a lot of room. As you can see, probably better for kids or shorter people back here. We've got that fold down armrest, which was part of the pass through. But yeah, back here is a little bit tight. Between the seats, we have our vents for the rear passengers, a little cubby here with 12 volt. I don't know if you can see this on camera. We also have a rather large sunroof. We'll check that out in a minute. Okay, on the passenger side, we got our glove box. Nothing too special on the doors. Again, the leather inserts, storage pocket down below. Nice place to sit though. You got one large cup holder here, two smaller ones. Have a little storage area with a couple USB ports. Got our vanity mirrors. To adjust the seats on the passenger side, they are manual, but there's this little guy right here. This lets you extend the seat a bit for your legs to reduce fatigue. Still comfortable seats, wrapped in leather. Okay, on the driver's side in the cockpit, here's our door, we got our storage area, put our rear hatch release here, speakers, all our window and mirror controls. We do have power seat adjustments with three memory positions, lock on lock. All these rentals, they wipe everything down and they always have this residue on them. 
So inside here, we do have our tilt steering right here. It's also telescopic, so you can get the driving position that you're looking for. Have our air vents here, our defrost, all pretty straightforward. Here we have our wiper stock. I won't go through all that. Pretty basic. This one does have the manual shiftability on the steering wheel. Our controls for the menu system we'll look at in a second. We have our media controls for volume as well as our hands-free calling and voice recognition. So let's start the vehicle. Okay, let's figure out how to put this thing into gear. So our shifter is actually on the steering column. So it's pretty straightforward. You push down for drive. You can see a change right here. Up again for neutral. And if I want to go in reverse, up one more time. And you can see the backup camera. When I turn the wheel, the backup camera also shows the path I'll travel while turning the wheel. Very common these days. And to put it in the park, you have to hold down the button and it moves to park. Up here, normal gauges. So we have our speedometer, we have our fuel. If you ever wondered, that arrow, depending on which side it is on, on that picture of a gas pump, is the side that your fill up is. So this one's on the left side. You didn't know that, now you do. In here, we control everything with the steering wheel. Change what's visible, and then make changes by hitting left and right. So, pretty straightforward. Okay, let's try our sunroof. That's the shade. And that opens both of them. Pull it forward and it closes both of them. So we'll leave it off or open. And you can also keep holding it and it'll open up for a little bit of airflow here. I'm just gonna close that, it's a little chilly. Nice. Let's have a closer look at the center console. We have our three adjustable vents. We have this section here that looks a little bit antiquated, but pretty straightforward. Radio, media, eject for your CD right there. Keypad for making phone calls and uh, navigation right here. Your telephone, like I just said. And this is not a touch screen. Maybe in higher end trims it is. Uh, you have to use this wheel right here to make adjustments. Uh, but going back to the center console, you have your heated seats. This is interesting here. When you click on this button, it brings up a graphic of the vehicle. And when you turn the steering wheel, it shows the angle of your steering rack. Interesting. Um, over here, there's a blank spot for a button that maybe a higher trim would have. The dynamic select is your different modes and the individual mode is customizable for your throttle response, steering control, auto start on or off, and then your climate controls. And you can see when you push that button, it also lets you see it in the center gauge cluster here as well. And then there's also eco mode. Then we have our hazards here, auto start stop on or off, uh, controlled hill descent button so you can regulate your speed going down a hill and not right on the brakes and then your passenger heated seat down here your climate controls so right now they are in sync with each other um, all pretty straightforward and you can you know change everything and you can have the passenger temperature different than your own in here we have an ashtray and we have another 12 volt plug Got the large cup holder here, media controls as I shown earlier. Um, all in all, not too bad. Okay, let's have a look at the center console. 
we have our heated seats right here. This button's interesting. I have to do a little more research, but when I push it, it brings up whatever mode I'm in, which I'll get to in a second, but it shows the position of my steering rack, whether my wheels are straight or not. The next button here is dynamic select. So when I pick that, it will go through all the different dynamic modes. And then you have the ability to, if you go to the individual setting, you can adjust your throttle response, your steering feel, auto start on or off, and your climate controls. Have our hazard button here. This is the auto start on and off. And then we have a hill descent button here. So when you're going down a hill, it will help limit the speed during that decline so you're not just riding the brakes the whole time. Then there's the heated passenger seat. What I found interesting here is this section just looks very retro. I mean, there's nothing too fantastical about its look or feel, but uh, all the buttons do what you would think that they would do based on how they're labeled. It's our shortcut to our owner's manual. We have our keypad here if we're making voice calls or phone calls. We have a CD slot right there. And then this is our volume knob. And it looks like there's an SD card reader there, probably for the navigation maps, I would assume. Okay, let's have a closer look at the infotainment system. So on the homepage, you have navigation, radio, your media, telephone, vehicle settings, fuel consumption, you can tag music, and there's some extra controls for uh, customizing your sound. And then there's an apps for Mercedes. Um, so this would have to establish an internet connection. I don't think we're connected. So we'll get out of that. Go back to the home here. Let's check out the vehicle. So we can check the different settings here. This is pretty cool, I like this. So you have a lot of control over how the lighting behaves on your vehicle. You can have the duration of how long the lights stay on or turn off, that type of thing. So that's neat. You can uh, adjust the settings here for the ride dynamics, as I mentioned earlier. So I can have individual to have eco start stop turned off or on, I'll put off. I can have my steering set to sport if I prefer it in sport. And then once I leave, now it's kept that configuration for individual. Check out my vehicle data. I can check out engine data. So this is kind of nice. makes it a little more fun, entertaining. And that's about it in there. Okay, let's do a noise test, doing 120 kilometers an hour. Some scenery of Northern Saskatchewan. Not too bad, actually. So one of the strangest controls on this car is the cruise control lever. It's tucked up in behind here. Right there. And it's very easy to bump and it's very sensitive so i'm doing 120 right now if i just tap it up gently see it changes it to 122 123 if i give it a harder tap it jumps by tens so just something to watch out for um, i bumped it a couple times today just uh, changing lanes and signaling so Keep that in mind.
rental agency, I'm going to return the vehicle momentarily, but a few things I did like about it, I like the customization options when it comes to the steering and the throttle response, that type of thing. Um, I did like the comfort. I liked that the cabin noise was on the low side. So overall, I'd say it was above average when it comes to uh, keeping it quiet at highway speeds. I would definitely rent it again if given the option. Um, it's definitely a, a recommend if that's uh, you know one of the ratings I'm going to start using. I'm not sure. A um, couple weird things though, not really complaints, but just weird, and I'll point them out. Earlier, I pointed out that the uh, center area here for your media controls just looks looks a little dated to me. That's just an opinion. It doesn't uh, necessarily mean anything and you might uh, disagree and that's cool. But what was kind of weird is the infotainment screen is angled to the passenger. So for safety concerns, I get it, but it seemed a little weird to me that if I'm the only one driving and I want to see maps, for example, for navigating, I'm going to have to look over there anyway. So to give it a little more advantage or a better vantage point for the passenger to see the screen versus the driver. I don't know. Uh, if they would have put it straight, that'd be my preference, but you can't you can't move it, it's fixed. Anyway, very minor. I can still see it just fine. It just seemed odd to me that it was tilted that way. Um, but that's it. I'm gonna return it. And uh, if you like watching this video, hit that like button, likes and subscribing. So if you wanna consider subscribing, you can always unsubscribe. Those are the two things that are most important to new YouTubers like me. Um, so yeah, your support would be much appreciated. Either way, I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to let you go. So have a great day.